What's up, everybody? My name is Parasite. Welcome back to the Jose Mourinho Challenge with Barcelona. Today, we've got Lille in the Champions League group stage and our first El Clasico. So we take on Real Madrid away from home. Last episode, it looked like we had to revive this Barcelona team. Looks like we were one of the best teams in Europe. Since then, we played four games and we suck again. The first three were away from home and we didn't win any of them. Lost two. And then we were at home for the fourth and we smashed them. So apparently this tactic and this team just can't play well away from home. And we didn't just lose. We were embarrassed. After we just beat Atletico Madrid, who won the league last year, and they only had two shots, one on target, in the entire game. We went away from home to take on Sevilla, and we lost 3-0. But it wasn't quite as bad as the scoreline looks. Two of their goals were in the last two minutes of the match after we went more attacking. But we were awful. Absolutely god-awful. Anyone that wasn't a defender, I think the highest was a 6.5 maybe a 6.6 .6, and the average was like a 6.3 everyone going forward was absolutely atrocious after we had scored three against Atletico only one against Villarreal away from home maybe that should have been a warning sign then three against Lazio I mean we played well against Celta Vigo away from home but these last three matches haven't been world beaters Sevilla not a bad team but Galatasaray we couldn't beat them they're bad Osasuna embarrassed us they're bad if you look at the match stats from the Sevilla match, they fully deserve to win. They were the much better team. We didn't even have one XG, even though we had 12 shots, five on target. Literally no one in the attack played well. Adley, 6.6. .6. No one else did anything. Karna, 6.4. Piers is just absolutely atrocious. I don't think he's played a single good game yet. And somehow our defense got an 8.5 for Leon. I don't know how, but we were just awful. But one of the more annoying things is the player that was the player of the match for Sevilla. One of the best players on the pitch. Definitely the best attacker on the pitch. He was unstoppable. And it's Sarabia, not Pablo Sarabia, and Hel Sarabia. He's a region. And he'd struggle to get in our under 19s. He is horrid. Absolutely horrid. He has 12 crossing, 12 passing. Outside of that, he can run fast. That's basically it. And this guy from the midfield absolutely torched us. Now looking at the Galatasaray match. Once again, we didn't deserve to win. We actually probably should have lost because we gave away a penalty in the 91st minute. Ponzi just awesome gave away the penalty fortunately David Raya who was in goal for the Champions League match saved it otherwise we would have lost to Galatasaray who are very 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 bad when compared to us Gabels again nothing Piers just an awful player at least had some players do something Oscar had an okay game got the assist I believe uh the goal went to Mark Wehi. I think it was a corner or I think it, it might have been from a throw in even and then Osasuna 3-1 loss we did have the higher xg in this one but I still don't really think we deserve to win Again, we had four half chances, two clear cut chances, but the strike partnerships, Karn and Grabels, have been awful. Absolutely awful. They both scored on their debut. I believe the Deportivo match, Karn got a hat trick on his debut. Then the next match against Celta Vigo, William Gabels got a hat trick on his debut. Since then, they have combined for zero goals in seven matches. And one of them has played in every single one, both of them playing in quite a few of them as well. I don't know what happened, but they just cannot score anymore. And then out of nowhere, I didn't really change anything. We beat Real Sociedad 5-0. I guess just because we were at home. I feel like the home advantage is way, way too strong in this FM. But it's not like you can't win away from home. It's you can't really be that attacking against an average to below average team and not get dominated. You have to play a lot more passive to have any chance. Even if you have 20 times their skill, you will not outplay them if they are at home and you try to be attacking. So we just cannot use our 3-5-2, whatever you want to call it. We can't use it. It will not work away from home, apparently. Because like it's not like we got FM in these matches. We deserve to lose them. So we've had to change up our away tactic, and we'll be dang viewing it today against Lille. And if it works, we'll probably see it against Real Madrid as well. And that tactic is just a boring old 4-2-3-1 with a double pivot. Both center mids on defend. Just looking to be more defensive. You know, we'll let these attacking four try to score goals i don't know if it's a good thing considering you know maybe we had like five or six players in attack before and they couldn't do anything going forward but maybe if we're more defensively solid we can have a better chance i don't know the four at the back i think probably makes sense even though you think okay three would be more defensive i don't think it is especially the way we were playing it maybe we could find a way to play a five at the back i even tried to play move trent to a right wing back and we were just as bad defensively and we were even worse going forward so yeah, I decided let's go to a 4-2-3-1, go a four at the back, and hope and pray that we can do something away from home. We'll find out today. Uh, Williams is going to be starting on the right wing. 
you know, one of the things, maybe you want to make both wing backs, pull them both back in the three at the back, but Nico Williams can't play left wing back. And I, he's 30 years old. I don't think we can really retrain him to be a left wing back. And so we have to use him. It's not like you say, oh, well, let's just not play one of our best players just so we can play a five at the back with two wing backs. That doesn't make sense to me. So I need a way to get him on the pitch. And so I decided to go for this 4 2 3 1. In terms of the squad for this one, Luca Carna is going to start up top. Left wing, Oscar's going to have to play there. We don't really have a lot of options. Zaniolo can also play on the left wing, but he's injured. And so I'm going to go with Oscar there as an inside forward. I don't love it because it tells him to dribble more and he has 10 dribbling, but we're going to test it out. I feel like he needs to be. I don't want him as a Rom Deuter because sometimes it says sometimes they forego their defensive responsibilities. And I think that doesn't make a lot of sense when we're away from home. So I'm going to try him as a supportive inside forward. Adley through the middle as a shadow striker. Williams on the right wing as an inverted winger on attack. Nico, defensive deep lying playmaker. Camera is going to play this one as a defensive ball winning midfielder. But Boothby can also play in there. Maybe he's a center man on defend. Aribe is on the bench as well because we don't have Zaniolo and we've got Adley in a more attacking role. Uh, left back is going to be Ponzi. He's not played good at left back so far. And he's had a pretty bad couple of games at center back as well. He's not really impressed me. Not like I thought. I thought he was going to be one of our best players. And I'm a little disappointed. Uh, the Cinemax are going to go full strength, though. Nianzu, just back from injury, and Araujo next to him. Trent, a right back, and then David Raya is going to start for the Champions League for us. The last three matches away from home, we've been embarrassed in every single one of them. Will a change of tactic change our fortunes? We'll find out together. 15 minutes in, and so far, nothing has happened. Not an encouraging start for us going forward in our 4-2-3-1. We've had two shots, one on target, but .09 XG as we give the ball away, and they're through on goal, and they're going to score with their first shot on target because of a stupid defensive mistake. Something that followed us a long time at Chelsea. Every time we conceded, it seemed to be our defenders doing something idiotic. And it's going to continue. Was it Trent that gave the ball away? I need to see who this... No, it was Nico. Just, wh where was he thinking that was going to go? Just absolutely idiotic. And then now we're down 1-0. And we've done nothing going forward. And a change of tactics is not going to do anything about that. It doesn't matter what tactic you're playing if your player is just going to give the ball away stupidly and make them throw on goal. Just absolutely ridiculous. But can we answer back? Nico is going to find Adley. He's going to turn, look to run at the defense. Going to go out wide to this left-hand side. Look for a ball through. Back post, Nico Williams. He is for sure on side. I would be absolutely shocked if he was off. He looked blatantly offside, and I think we've just equalized. A good ball, too. Really good ball from Adley to find Williams at the back post. And apparently I'm an idiot. Luca, Luca Carna is offside. Was he interfering? I'm assuming not even close. Hold up now. He never once tried to go after the ball. The second it was played, he actually ran backwards. That is an awful call. That is one of the worst calls I've ever seen in FM. Hold up. He legitimately never made an effort to go for the ball here. So he's slightly offside. The ball gets played and he just stops. He does not move forward. He doesn't even do anything trying to go for the ball. He's not in the way of the goalkeeper. He's outside the freaking box. How are you calling him offside? We were just absolutely screwed there. As if things aren't going bad enough, now we have to be absolutely screwed over by the referees. Just off awful. I love how this is going. Adley, see if we can answer back. I mean, eventually, they're not gonna, they're gonna run out of ways to try to take goals away from us. Fernandez, ball's gonna back to him. He's gonna go for a long ball. We should be winning this. And Nianzu does, but what has happened to this team? I think every single one of our players forgets how to play the sport when they're away from home, and that makes no sense. Oscar just absolutely lazy, walking to get the ball, and Wilton jumps in front of him, and Nico's not doing anything either. Just absolutely atrocious all the way around. Nico does intercept. It's going to fall to Adley. Can we do something? A long ball through to Luke Karna, and again, he's jogging. I don't think he would have got there, but just no effort from this team. And they're going to have it back after the goal kick. Looking for Majovic. Williams coming back to pick it up. Adley into Williams. He can play through. Oh, he's making a run. That was Oscar. Finds Trent. He looks for a ball over top. Luke Karna. He hasn't scored in a while. As long as it's offside and there isn't some phantom player offside that does, isn't even close to the play. I think we've scored. They're not going to take this one away from us. It's 1-1. And the half is going to end 1-1. At least we're able to pull one back. But this should be 2-1 right now. First half of the second half, almost 49 minutes in. It's going to be a goal kick from Lille. They're going to go along, and we should be winning this, but who knows? We don't end. Oh, we wish he's throw on goal, and was that a save? 
Ah, uh, no, it's a goal kick. He completely missed the target. He should have been burying that. Polino, the guy that won that header over, I believe it was Nianzu, he's five foot ten with eight jumping reach. And yet he beat six foot four Nianzu with like 17 jumping reach in the air. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So far, this is not an encouraging start for a 4 2 3 1. Leal have out X Jesus. Just barely right now, but still out of out of Jesus. At least we're doing a little bit going forward. We have 15 shots, nine on target, but the quality of them must be pretty poor. Luca Cardinal is going to just dribble into a defender, something we saw a lot in that three game stretch. Just running at straight at defenders and not trying to get around them, just running into them, giving the ball away stupidly, just completely forgetting how to play football. Trent can't quite win it. Now they're going to see if they can find a through ball. He's going to find Paulinho, the giant apparently. He's going to find the through ball to Wilton. Should be a save here. David Rai does make the save as he tries to go to the near post. 81st minute. We've been a little bit without a highlight, but we got one. But it is starting with Leal. Down this left-hand side, I think they've still been the better team. I mean, it's actually dead even on XG. But we have about, probably about 15 to 20 times the talent. We should not be struggling against Leal. Our players are better at every single position and on the bench. And yet, we've been awful once again trying to play this 4-2-3-1. Once again, they're throwing goal, but he's still got a lot to do here. David Rye should be saving that, and he does. But he does only pump it behind for a corner. We've not seen many corners for either team, really, so far this game. But Ikone is going to look to whip one in. Going for the near post, but we win it. And now Nico Williams has a chance. It's a two-on-two. -two. Can he do something here? He's got the dribbling. He's got the pace. He's going to hold it up. Going to look for a ball to Luka Karna, who's going to try to head it. I mean, okay. It, is it technically a shot on target? Because that's one of the weakest shots on target I might have ever seen. And it's going to be another draw. We are still yet to win away from home in our last four matches. And we've looked awful in every single one of them. We end up with higher XG. But the fact we only score one goal from 22 shots, 11 on target, is embarrassing. And looking at the stats for that match, it's not like our fullbacks were the ones having the shots. It's our dudes that should be scoring goals. Luka Karna had six attempts. He only put half of them on target, scored one of them. But Oscar had five attempts, could only put one of them on target. And uh, Nico Williams, who has scored double digit goals in almost every single season in the past like five or six years, had five attempts, three on target, and scored none of them. Our players in attacking positions are having chances. They just cannot score. I don't know what the answer is away from home. The whole idea with this tactic was to be more defensive, and yet we were awful defensively. They had two XG with no penalties or anything like that. We were awful. They had far too many shots, far too many shots on target for a team that's probably average at best. I saw nothing from that to make me think we should play that against Real Madrid. So now it's attempt number three. We're going to try something else different. So for this Real Madrid match, we're going to play a five at the back with three center backs. Ponzi as a left wing back, not a center back. So Leon comes on in the midfield and just normal automatic wing backs. Uh, Nico in the midfield, only a midfield two with, especially with Adli, I don't love because he cannot defend. I'm really worried about that. But in terms of getting our best players that are, in the, especially in the current form out there, this is kind of it. Nico is the holding guy. Adley looking to be the ball progressor. And then we've got Oscar and Williams on the wings. And then Karna is a complete forward up top. In terms of instructions, I've changed just a few things. Tempo as high as I can get it. Pass into space. Not currently working the ball into the box, but that could be something I put on as well. Uh, I'm not counter pressing. I'm just going to counter. Distribute quickly to the center backs. And then I'm trying something out of possession. I'm going to only go with a standard line of engagement. I almost always go much higher. But I'm going to see if we just drop off a bit and then hopefully we can give ourselves more space to counter with i don't know we're trying to pass the ball into space so i want to create some space we are still going to have a higher defensive line and much more pressing but we're not using an outside trap and we're not preventing short goalkeeper distribution either but we do have a couple matches before this real madrid match first we're at home taking on cadiz we'll play our normal three at the back for that one it seems to work at home and then we'll test it away from home against levanta so I'll play through those games, and then I'll see you for the first El Clasico of the series as we take on Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. Unfortunately, we're on the worst away form of the entire series. All right, it's time for El Clasico. We did just play two league games. Started off at home against Cadiz and completely one-sided. We comfortably beat them 2-0. Then away from home against Levante. Did we win? We're away from home. Of course we didn't win. Fortunately, we didn't lose, but we drew. Nil-nil. Because -nil. once again... Even though we created plenty of chances, our forwards were absolutely horrible. It is finished 2-0. Zaniolo and Gabels getting his first goal in a while to give us the comfortable 2-0 win. But the match stats were absolutely hilariously one-sided. We destroyed them. 3.29 XG. They had one shot on target. Four shots in total. And then Levante. We are just awful. Absolutely awful away from home. 
at least there's a little bit of hope with this one. We actually played well, but like I said, our forwards were incompetent. Uh, we created the majority of the chances. They didn't do much going forward, which has been a problem for us away from home. Teams create far too much against us. Fortunately, we held them in check, but our attack can't do anything when they're away from home. They leave Barcelona and it takes away all their powers. They become Sunday League players. And now we have to go away from home and take on Real Madrid. We might get absolutely humiliated. We are going to play the five of the back. This is what we played against Levante. And defensively, we were good. But they're Levante, and this is Real Madrid. So I, they're going to create more chances, and we're going to have to score goals. And I don't know if we're capable. Fortunately, we're pretty much full strength. The only injury was Zaniolo picked a bullet gashed leg in the game and had to come out and is going to miss four days with a gashed lower leg. That seems a little questionable to me, but... Outside of that, Karna up top, Oscar on the left-hand side, Williams on the right, Nico and Adley in the midfield, Ponzi, Alexander Arnold at fullbacks, Nianzu, Leon, and Araujo, and then Diego Chiai in net. On the bench, we've got Stasinos, Pedro Poro, who's played pretty well the last two games. Uh, Cucurella, Camera, Boothby, Cabells, and Larinaga. So it's Real Madrid versus Barcelona. El Clasico. And we really can't be playing much worse away from home. I'm looking forward to this one. Where are you looking for improvements after a disappointing match against Levante last time out? We need to improve our quality in front of goal. We created enough chances to score one or two goals against Levante, and we couldn't get it done. Well, that's going to have to change today. Real Madrid are going to be scoring goals, so we need to score goals ourselves. Don't you think the first goal here will be crucial? Obviously, both teams would like to start out fast and score that goal, but both teams also have plenty of quality. So no matter who scores the first goal, the game will be far from over. It's a big day all round. How much do you look forward to taking on your rivals? I mean, it's El Clasico. Everybody growing up all across the world watches these matches. It's one of the biggest rivalries in all of sports. So personally, I am very excited. But that excitement is echoed all across the entire organization. Well, El Clasico is officially on the way. And we've started the brighter of the two teams so far. We are 25 minutes in, but... Real Madrid have done nothing so far. They don't have a shot yet. We have four shots, one on target, and we have a chance here as we find Ponzi on the edge of the area. He's going to look for Williams. It's not quite going to get there, though. But Trent's going to pick it up. Ponzi is playing as a left wing back today, playing with three normal center backs. Araujo is going to find Adley, and he find a through ball. He's going to look for Alexander Arnold to go back to Araujo, playing as a defensive wide center back. So still getting a little bit further forward, but not too aggressively. But we do give the ball away. They play a back pass to their goalkeeper, and they're going to see if they can build out from the back. Militao, going to find Gallego into Soleil, Kimmich in their midfield, very good player, and goal line technology, I mean, was that from the pass back? I think it was. I mean, this is El Clasico, and that highlight was a back pass. Awesome. Great start. But, I mean, it has been a bright start for Barcelona. Once again, we're the one attacking Real Madrid. Trent Alexander-Arnold is through. He's going to have to pull it back. It's a good deflection. It falls to Luka Karna, but another good block. Real Madrid have defended very well so far today, but we've looked the brighter of the teams going forward. This is going to be the final highlight of the first half. We have been the better team, but creating chances and looking good means nothing if you don't score, and we haven't scored yet. Nianzu, now on the ball, is going to have plenty of time to find Nico. Going back to Leon, into Adley, back out to Araujo, back into Adley. Playing out pretty slowly, even though we are playing on a high tempo. It's kind of surprising to see, Nico. But we're playing smart. We're not giving the ball away stupidly, at least yet. Kurt kiss of death. Oscar now dropping deep is going to pick it up. He's going to find Adley. Now we look to see if we can break the lines. Find a through ball. Williams in a good spot. He's going to find Luka Karna. Throw on goal. Our first real chance. He looks to chip the keeper. And it, if he put that on target, that is a goal. But he can't even put it on target. Luka Karna should be a dominant goal scorer. So far for us, he's been bad. It was all Barcelona in that first half. So everyone that plays FM knows Real Madrid are probably winning this. They're going to dominate this second half. And it's at best going to be a draw. Hopefully I'm wrong. Dio Kiai looking for a long ball to Oscar, who's never going to win that. They do hit it down to Conceição. Is this going to be the first time we see Real Madrid attacking our goal? It looks like it. He's going to go from range, and Conceição is going to try to do it all himself. But that wasn't even close. Well, fortunately, Real Madrid didn't dominate the second half, but we didn't do anything at all either. We only saw one highlight in the second half after we completely annihilated them in the first half. But we couldn't freaking score. Because once again, our front three, even include the midfielders, front five, were horrible. Adley 6.4, Nico Williams 6.2, Luka Karna 6.5, Oscar did nothing. Just no one going forward did absolutely anything. Created a fair number of chances, two half chances, nothing special, but over one XG. But of course, we still cannot score. Why does this keep happening? It has to be an FM thing at this point. 
We have so many different players throughout this series, and yet it's always down to the same thing. No matter the quality they have, they cannot freaking score goals. At least we were pretty good defensively against Real Madrid. It's more than we've seen recently away from home, but it doesn't matter if you cannot score. And for over a month, the most goals we scored away from home is one. I don't understand it. We are scoring for fun at home, but the second they leave Barcelona, they lose any ability to finish. At this point, maybe it's just me, but I feel like there is a significant issue with FM22 when it comes to the user scoring goals. The CPU don't seem to have the same issues. They still score plenty of goals. I mean, let's look at Nico Williams. He was a prolific goal scorer before I got here. 12 goals, 13 goals, 20 goals, 15 goals, even though I had no idea why, because his attributes are not good when it comes to scoring goals. But for the CPU, it doesn't matter. But for you, he has one in 11. All 11 are starts. He can do absolutely nothing in front of goal. Yes, he's played some as a left winger, but he's played some on the right wing as well. And every single time he's played as a right winger, he's been one of, if not the worst player on the pitch. I just don't understand because it doesn't seem to be tactic dependent. It doesn't seem to be player dependent. I've had plenty of different tactics. I've had plenty of different players and I've had the same thing with every single one of them. I just don't know what to do at this point. It is just so frustrating. Fortunately, we have a couple home games coming up. We'll probably score five goals in either of them. Then next episode, we're going to come back for our next away game, taking on a mid-table, average at best team, Las Palmas. I can almost guarantee we will struggle and score no more than one goal. And then we'll have Galatasaray in the Champions League group stage at home. And we still need some points if we're going to qualify. We are on top, but tied on points with Lille. But Lazio and Galatasaray are still right there. I'll see you for that next episode. Hopefully that one will be a little bit more enjoyable for me than this one was. If you made it this far, why don't you like the video, subscribe, and click the bell. The links to all my socials and my Twitch are in the description. I really appreciate all your support. Thank you all for joining me. And I'll see you next time.